Now, when my next guest was made a peer in 1996, he was the only black lord out of nearly 1,800. On his first day in the House of Lords, an elderly Viscount took him for a waiter and asked for a gin and tonic. Subsequently, he has spoken at the White House, the UN and the World Trade Organisation. Throughout a long career, he has spoken about diversity and inclusion, and he continues to challenge boardrooms to become more diverse. He's described the move towards racial equality as a marathon and not a sprint. By his own testimony, he remains optimistic about the future. Lord Taylor of Warwick joins me now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Hello, Neil. It's good to be here. Lovely to see you there. Um, Obviously, the the, the race debate has grown especially febrile, uh, hot tempered in the last couple of years. Has that injection of heat hindered or helped progress towards the the longed-for equality? Neil, I think it has. I mean, there's more heat than light, unfortunately. Let's start at the beginning. There's only one race, the human race. Mm. We should all be equal. We're not. Mm. But rather than being bitter, let's get better. Let's learn from the past. I'm actually very positive. You know, I'd rather be black in Britain than Russia or Iraq or other parts of the world. Mm. Let's be positive. The glass is half full. There are lots of problems, but let's be positive. It's faith, not fear. You, you've mentioned uh, that other protests, anti-racism protests, in recent m- months and years have, have uh, been the work of and have attracted those whose objectives you don't agree with and haven't and that you d- don't think have helped. Could you elaborate on For that? For example, defunding the police. That's mm. balmy. Mm. Uh, Black Lives Matter has become a business. The people that started BLM have just bought a mansion in America for $6.5 million. Mm. Now, they need to explain why they've done that. You see optimism, which I'm I'm always delighted to hear about. Optimism for any reason in any... I support Aston Villa. I have to be optimistic. (laughs) Otherwise, I... (laughs) You you know, you've been been involved in politics since, well, the 80s anyway. Yeah, the 1880s, yeah. I know, I'm and old. Through, <laughs> thank you. And, thank through you. The, and through the 90s, uh, does your optimism come from, do you continue to see things getting better to such an extent that what's happening now, do you see that more, of, more as a blip that we can get beyond? Well, my mother told me, John, being black is not a profession, so you need to get skills and education. We all have problems in life, whether you're black, white, disabled, female, male... People watching this show have their own problems. Mm. You have to look at them as this. Is it uh, a speed bump or a roadblock? And Mm. it's a way of getting around this. Mm. Um, I believe we're living in a fantastic country. There have been bad things in the past. I mean, my great-great-grandfather was a slave on the Taylor plantation. That's why I'm called John Taylor. I could be bitter about it or let's get better. So my attitude is let's look forward to the future. This is a great country, multiracial, multicultural. Yeah, there are problems. We'll get around them. We were talking with, a, I don't know if you had the opportunity to hear it, we had a previous guest talking about decolonising the, the history curriculum. Uh, and there's been a lot of uh, high-profile cases of you know, the removal of statues, other, other cultural figures being, being targeted uh, as for one reason and another. How do you feel watching that and you know, does it have does any of it have your backing well, I spoke about path? this at Oxford University a few months ago I'd rather make history than delete it we know there are problems in the mm-hmm. past you know slavery and so forth but rather than take down the statues leave them up there and explain that that person was a slave trader if you take down the statue it means that my grandchildren won't even know about that slave trader so, you know, yeah, don't delete. Explain and move on. There's also some hypocrisy, I'm afraid. There's more modern slavery mm. than Victorian slavery in the fashion industry, in the third world, making our garments that appear in the, you know, fashion stores. But we don't talk about that. We talk about some dead Victorian mm-hmm. who can't answer for himself. It does, it, that element does mystify me because you know, the, the, the appetite to to seek almost to punish people who, in many, most cases, died comfortably tucked up in their beds a couple of hundred years ago, seems uh, unbelievably pointless and futile. When, as you say, 
that are inequities and, and, and appalling abuses. And by the way, there were also black slave traders. We don't like to talk about that. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisy. The, if, I can, if I can invite you to consider you know, the wider, uh, wider topics, um, clearly a, a very hot... Not Aston Villa, please. Yeah. Let's move um, on from I that. I can only tell you well, that I know nothing about football. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're on I the am, wrong side. I'm absolved. Right. I'm absolved. I'm just very sensitive. Yeah. I, can under, yeah. I can understand all of that. Yeah. Right. When, it, yeah. when it comes to the, the numbers of uh, cross channel immigration, is a very hot topic at the moment. Uh, how, what's your response to, you know, we're seeing these record numbers being, being reported, and it's probably not even the totality of, of the numbers that are, that are actually on the move. Now there's talk of uh, moving, offshoring people to to Rwanda uh, to process, and, and yet at the same time there are the Ukrainian refugees yeah. fleeing a bona fide war zone, also needing to be and seeking to be accommodated. How do you, when you look on it, that movement of people, all of them needing or wanting to come to this part of the world, what do you say? Well, it, you it is an issue. It's a question of how you fix it. With uh, Rwanda, I'm just concerned, Neil, that it's politics pushing policy. We've got the local elections coming up in a few days' time. The timing. Yeah, the timing, and it uh, detracts from Partygate and so forth. Yeah. But will it be effective? Something needs to be done. Let's be frank about that. But will it be effective? Australia tried it. Israel tried it. Denmark has tried it. Very expensive, and it hasn't worked. Mm. So, you know, somebody said that uh, it'd be cheaper to put someone up in the Ritz than do what they're doing. So to offshore the problem, I'm not convinced is the right... But I do agree we have to find a solution. Do you think that hiding out there in plain sight or, or, or not is a solution that is not draconian? You know, there are obviously there are there are there's one draconian thing or another that could be done that that no doubt would would stop the movement of people crossing well, the channel. But uh, short yeah, of that, sure. is there a, is there an elusive, peaceful, amicable solution to what is clearly a problem that will not yes, stop and will not I go believe away? there is. And what is it? We have embassies all around the world. The people concerned who are desperate should go to those British embassies, and apply for asylum there in Iraq, in Syria, and if they succeed, then they come across. That's what should be done. I don't know why they don't do it. And the government should be doing this. Otherwise, people are going to continue. Do you think they're going to stop? They're, mm. they're desperate. Mm. This, is, this is the issue. I, I cannot help but think that there are only going to be more and more people on the move. Absolutely. Full stop. And I mean, this I, only affects single men. So it'll be women and children coming across in the dinghies. Disaster. I, mean, I think on the planet as a whole, I think it's something like seven. Uh, no, it's one billion people out of seven billion people are on the move. Yeah, yeah. Within their own country or from one country to another. Yeah. You um, had a pastor on in the last segment. I think it's Matthew five verse nine. Blessed are the peacemakers, mm. and that's what we should be doing: making peace. What we're doing is firefighting. We should be, you know, talking to people, talking to the Russians before the war starts. And it is. You see, we bomb these places and are surprised when they want to come here. Mm. We bomb them. <laughs> That's You're, the result of war. The def a defining characteristic of what you have been about is, di is diversity and inclusion. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is that the solution? Is that, all, is that also part of the solution to, to I don't know, um, f fomenting understanding or fostering understanding it, it of, is. of other people, other? Yeah, no, movement? I agree. And, and fear of the other is, is the element of racism, really. Um, it's not just about black faces in high places, but that helps. If you look at in Britain, I mean, you take football, which I've mentioned a hundred times already. Um, there's no black oration at the top of the FA, the Premier League. Look at cricket. My father played uh, cricket. Um, there's no one at the top of the ECB. You know, and so as a child growing up, I grew up in... A, Paradise, uh, Birmingham, off the M6 motorway. <laughs> um, when you look at the TV in the 1950s and you don't see any other black people, you don't feel that you're part of the community. And so, yes, you're right. On my, it was my first day in the House of Lords, I was in the Chumley room, standing there. An old elderly Viscount comes up to me. Oh, could you get me a gin and tonic, old boy? And so I got the gin and tonic and I came across, gave it to him. He said, thank you, thank you, good man. Another peer came up. Lord Taylor, are you settling in? 
And the Viscount, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. I thought it's my first day in the House of Lords and I've killed somebody. So, you know, and he said, but wh why did you get me the gin and tonic? I said, well, you so asked the, me to. So the error of his ways was revealed unto him. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> same, but you see, way. I could have reacted in anger. Absolutely. What would that have achieved? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you got yeah. him the drink. Oh, I've got you, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, it's about campaigning in the right way yes. and this is something I talk about so often you know when as you've said at the start I'm a political consultant amongst too many other hats um, but change is made when you can find a space of agreement and broaden it exactly it's not made when you just go yeah. to your it's, it's not a boxing match yeah yeah, yeah. What, it's a journey not a destination what, what do you think of the but I think we can all acknowledge that the, the movement of people across the channel is is, is a disruption that's disrupting life for a lot of people, not not just the people who are on the move. What do you think to the latest proposal, this offshoring of I mean, I completely agree with what Lord Taylor said in that it feels ill thought through, rushed, um, very expensive, and it just feels to me like it's... I, I get quite cross at people who claim just about everything that Boris Johnson does is a dead cat strategy. It's one of those phrases that we've picked up on and don't really understand. On the other hand, if it looks like a dead cat, smells like a dead cat and doesn't meow, <laughs> um, I think that is what we've got on the table here. It's, it's, I'm not even sure this is actually going to really happen in any sort of proper way because it's basically unworkable. Listening to... The, to that that proposed policy, or I think it's been signed off now, hasn't it? Jasmine, do you think a single person will will embark, will board a plane and and arrive in Rwanda as a result of this? Or? That, that, that's that is the question always, isn't it? You know, they they, they the government often makes these great pronouncements, and then when it comes down to it, the paperwork, the actual physical reality of it, it is quite a different thing. So yeah, it, who knows? Honestly, who knows? Clearly, there needs to be some sort of deterrent. There needs to be something done because, you know, we've seen the figures. They are extraordinary. Um, but it must be, you know, as we've talked about joined up uh, government or lack of, um, there, there needs to be a joined up uh, approach on, from a, a multi-country um, point of view. We've got, we've got to be con together with France on this for a start. I used to be at the Home Office. I was a special advisor. You need to work with the civil servants, and they've already said they're not happy about this, and that's a bad sign. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, let's face it, the Home Office is hardly the department you would give a really, really complex big project yeah. to run. It's too big, Neil. It um, really is. It? Yeah. But also, I think, rather than just saying, how do we deter people from coming, how do we make it really awful and hard and rotten and how do, you know, these are people for whom awful hard and rotten is yeah. a daily reality yeah. it's very hard to yeah. make things worse than they are for them yeah. actually something that you were saying earlier lord taylor is you know where, how can we intervene yes. to make their lives better invest, elsewhere? Invest. And actually, that is <laughs> the best peace. way of, of thinking yes. about this for yeah. us. We make war, we bomb them, and then they want to come here. And we say no. Now, you're an Aston Villa supporter, and you've <laughs> told, tell that that, and that, and you've told me that that, that that necessitates a certain level of optimism. So I want to end this on an optimistic Fantasy. note. <laughs> Yeah. Give us another uh, sense of why you remain optimistic that this whole issue of seeking to become one human race is a marathon that can be won. Because I'm a Christian, I've got a Christian faith, and I think we live in an amazing world that God created. And if you look at history, it's always moving forwards, mm -hmm. never backwards. We have problems, but the trend is forwards. That's why I'm optimistic. I'll take that. Not that's... because I'm an Aston Villa supporter. <laughs> I, I, I'm defiant. I, I, how dare you impugn it's good, my... It's, yeah. good, you know, it's good to hear hope and optimism on, uh, on the, on East, at Easter time. Exactly. So thank, thank you. you. Many thanks for coming thanks, in Neil. and sharing, above all else, your optimism <laughs> with us. Great to see you.